God set you apart from the moment he created you, made you be a beacon of light in this dark world. Have you realized that you walk in a place and people see you are not ordinary? You give hope to everyone. You have the mark of God on your head. God called you to live a life different from the world because you are not to blend in among the thorns, but to stand out differently than the rest of the world. You, as one created by God, have been called to be set apart and be holy as God is holy. You don't gain approval from the world. You do not follow trends because you are the trendsetter. You are the leader. You have a divine purpose. You have been set apart to show the love of God. So you stand out and live in a way that glorifies God. You are a core cool member of God's family. He has chosen you to do his work here on earth. Through God, you are given an intended purpose to fulfill God's will for his kingdom. It's not easy. You have to work hard and persevere. As you face storms, know that you have been called out from many into fellowship with God. He is ready and willing to reveal his purpose to you. Instead of conforming to the world, you are called to submit to the rules of the one who made you. Your conduct and behavior should be a reflection of your divine calling. The Spirit of God works within you, changing your heart so that you live like you are indeed marked different than those that remain in the world. In all this, you must have the courage to stand out. The choices you make are a reflection of your faith in God. Your action determines if you truly understand that you are mad. God will help you to stand out of your comfort zone. It will help you see the greater purpose He has called you to. God has His hand on you for a particular purpose. He'll use other people, dreams, visions, and that still small voice to get you on track. To be marked by God for a particular purpose, He guides our lives differently than you might have had. You not submitted to his call because he has set you apart you are already walking into your destiny walking on your different path you will feel a pull away from people and things that distract you but that's progress even though we may feel as if we are putting on a shelf and forgotten we have been set apart for the call of god in our lives it is during these times that we will find ourselves spending quality time with God as He molds and makes us into His image. He will build character in us so that when it is time to go on to the front lines, He knows we will be ready. He can trust us with what He appoints us for us to do. As it is said, come out from among them and be ye separate. God has chosen you to work for Him. And you need to be set apart, determined to do the work for the king. He has anointed you and equipped you to be used for the advancement of his kingdom. You are made to be wholly consecrated to him. You are given a unique role in life to serve him. You are a stranger to this world system. Instead of thinking and acting like the world, you are set apart from this more common way of viewing and live in life and are given a different purpose. You could say that we are separated from wilderness and given a new purpose to be used by God. If you are set apart to do the work of the Lord, then you will not have time to get into trouble, especially if you place your heart on pleasing Him. You see, setting apart would mean forgetting sometimes the most things that you think you love. Sometimes it has to be leaving even your beloved family. Sometimes setting apart is getting out of that thing that you thought was formerly your course to follow. But then you will know deep down in your heart that that setting apart is always the right way even when those things seem to pull you back. You must realize that 
been set apart means a moment of contradiction with other people's belief. You will contend with those that thought you are going wrong and some would actually come out and tell you to your face that you're missing the part. But if you know and you confirm that you know that that which you have been pulled to has to do with your destiny, you will endure the scorning, the jeering, and of course the outright condemnation by those you so much love. Being set apart does not mean being loved by everybody. You know the story of Joseph, where the moment he dreamt a dream and had to explain that he had that dream that made him set apart, he began from that day to become an enemy, not only to him, and of course even to his family members. And even when he got to the land of Egypt, consistently being set apart can mean that trouble upon trouble will come your way. You see, it's always a trying period. It can be a lonely moment. It can always be that time that it looks as if when you speak, heaven is brass and the ground would not sprout out and give you its own yielding. Just know that most of these times, the mighty one that has called you to that setting apart knows exactly what he is doing because you are developing that thick skin of being alone in order for you to be for all. Being set apart is not always forever, but it is for the purpose of the betterment and the goodness of the overall. Know this fact and know it for a truth that you're being set apart. It's always going to be for nations. Hardly would one be set apart for himself and to himself alone because you are always supposed to be a separate one. You see, I always want to compare being set apart with the way the plant or the palm tree grows. When the seed is planted, it doesn't come out in one day. Neither does it come out in one week or one month or one year or two years. It takes years because it first off goes downwards, dies and goes to the root before it springs up. But then when it begins to grow, every part of it becomes so important to humanity. Look at the palm tree, there is never a part of it that is ever useless. So it is with those that are being set apart and that it is it with you. You are set apart first to die and then you come out a new you to become useful in every ramification that when you speak, your word becomes important. When you, ref you reflex, any other action would be interpreted to the benefit of the world. Those that are set apart are never many. They are always few from the majority. See yourself as such and stay within the purview of that which you are called. Know God's will for your life. There's no one that can tell the story of your life like you. There's no one that can narrate your life like you will. No one can achieve your life for you if you don't. And so you don't waste your time depending on other people to validate you. Because that actually makes you not only to doubt yourself, but also you begin to find yourself trying to replicate other people's achievement. Many people have spent all their lives trying to become someone else because they did not take their time to find out the will of God in their lives. That is always regrettable because it gets to a key or the end of their life, the twilight of their days and the regret wishing that they did what they actually wanted. A number of people, especially parents, have been not so supportive when it comes to people or the children's life. We call it vision. 
But then most times your vision cannot be far from the will of God in your life. The easiest way to find out the will of God in your life is to go back to God and find out exactly what he has in stock for you. The moment you accept him, your eyes of understanding will be opened and then it's easier for you to know or ask, where do you want me? He actually did not give that response. Over the years, it took the time that Uzziah had to die and then Uzziah is a representation of many of us who we trust, we believe, we lean on, we depend on. We feel that our fulfillment can come only when those people endorse us. It might be even your parents that you so rely on all the days of your life determining, they are the ones determining what you want and then suddenly they are not there. You find yourself wobbling and groping in the dark because in the first place, whatever you were doing was as a result of only what they said. You see, when Isaiah lost his cousin, who happened to have been the king at that time, even as a priest, Uzziah had been groping in the dark. But then when Uzziah left the scene, Isaiah knew what it was to be called of God. No wonder he was willing to say when God was asking her, who should I send to the house of Israel? And he said, here I am, send me. Isaiah 61 says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to, to bind the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives and set free those who the enemy had bound. But many of us have groped we become adults, we are so old that we do not even know exactly where or what our desire or God's will is for us. Some of us have been so carried away with our passions or our secular movement that at a point we did not even know where to marry it in order to fulfill the will of God in our lives. And though you know there is always a, a hollow in the heart of every man that no matter what you achieve, if you do not fit that hollow with the right puzzle, and that is the will of God, you would always ask the question, this is not enough. The hunger is not exactly as that of a hunger of wanting to do something, but then it has to do with wanting to fulfill God's own desire in your life. You must understand that God has a plan for us. You must know that as a child of God, there is a will of the Father. You see, I tell people when I read the story in 1 Samuel concerning uh, Penina and, uh, and Hannah, how it looked as if Hannah did not have children, how it looked as if Penina was the one having the children all the while, and Hannah would go to Shiloh and come back and go and come back and go. And then, this particular day when our eyes opened, and then she decided to ask specifically what she wanted of God. It was just beyond just a son. She knew that if I gave God the son, who happens to be what God had always wanted, she knew that that would liberate her from barrenness. And wonder, without hearing anything she muttered, even when he misconstrued what she was doing, the priest actually opened his mouth and told Hannah, it says, God will do for you that which you asked. You know, she understood the will of God at some point after going rigmaroling over the years. And so when God answered her with Samuel, she took him back. She knew that the will of God for her was not just about having children, but the will is to give birth so that which would do his desire in his temple, knowing that Eli's children and Eli's well stricken in age might not have a successor. God's will is that his name alone be glorified. And you must realize that finding the will of God should fit in with what will glorify him in the end. No matter your achievement, if it does not glorify God, God does not see it as anything. 
of all the children that Hannah got, one stood out, Samuel, because she gave him back to God. She understood. And of course, because he stayed so long in the temple, God was able to call him and tell him exactly his will. Are you sitting where God will speak to you about his will? Are you standing where God will speak to you about his will? Are you meditating day and night and asking the genuine question that you actually want the will of God in your life? If you do, I can assure you that he will show you that blueprint. God never calls anybody or allows him to come without giving him a blueprint of his will. In fact, as you look into the Bible, you'll find that each and every one of them, God's intention was for them, even when some of them derailed, his intention is that they fulfilled his will. Find your will in God's word. Because it's always there. Fulfill his calling and you'll find out that you've fulfilled your own calling. It can never be extricated from the other. Once you align yourself with God's will, you automatically will have satisfaction in fulfilling your own destiny. Find your will in God. God bless you. Amen.